afternoon to talk about his latest selected poems, 1968 to 2014. And it's nice to talk to you again. Thank you very much indeed for having me. Selected poems over so many years, huh? Do you like putting together collections like this? Because this is not your first. It's not the first I've done. Um, as you can see, it covers quite a span. Yes. Uh, there are 12 collections uh, represented here. That sounds like a very formal way of describing it. Yeah. Actually, I went about it in a reasonably informal way. Yeah. Because I, what I did was to take five poems from each of these 12 books. Oh, very specific. Very uh, specific. Yeah. I wanted to keep it shortish. You know, one doesn't want to be, you know, reading poetry is rough enough along the way for many people. I, yeah. I don't want anyone dying under the weight of my selected poems as if they happen to take it to bed. <laughs> and so I thought also, yeah. let's face it, um, quality control is an important issue. Yeah. I mean, one hopes that one's involved in quality control right the way along. Yeah, one assumes. Well, one hopes, yeah. but the trouble is that there's a very strong likelihood that one's kidding oneself, you know? And I suppose does one, does one know that as, as well, no, you know, here's the thing. I mean, you know, there's no point in doing this unless it's good. Yeah. That's my view. And I'm sure right. that's everyone's view. Right. So I suppose I was hoping that if I restricted myself to five poems per book, there might be a chance that I'd come out the other end with a demi semi solid yeah. book. So how do you make, how do you make those decisions though? You know, you're picking five of however many in each collection. It was a little bit like um, picking a horse in the Grand National, which is the great English steeplechase, yeah. Yeah, yeah. of course, and where anything can win. I sort of took, I, I just thought, oh, do I like this one? Do I like that one? I like this one. You know, so I did it very, very quickly, actually. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's either the kind of thing one could spend months thinking about, or in my case, actually minutes. Yeah. Well, so what do you see, though? I, I don't know if you're the kind of... Most of us live in the present, right? And we're not looking back at ourselves from 1968 on, unless called to by an anniversary or something like that, or a death, or a selected poems. What, what do you see when you go back and look at yourself of, for those years? Well, you know, I mean, again, it, I did it very quickly, and I have not been sitting around reading it. Uh -huh. I've given a few readings from it, including one here uh, in Miami. Yeah. But, you know, I suppose what I see is at least the attempt to try to make sense. It's a phrase I use again and again, mm -hmm. to make sense of various aspects of my life mm -hmm. in Ireland. The Ireland that I was brought up in, the Ireland of you know, the troubles in which I, right. uh, you know, was, was came into my young, you know, manhood, I suppose. Mm -hmm. And I lived in Belfast between uh, 1969 and 1986, for example. Yeah. So that world, the world of my family, mm -hmm. uh, my parents and the, the people who lived around me, that particular world, it's a very distant world in many ways now. Well, that's what I was wondering. I mean, does it feel like you looking at a, dis a different character in that time, or is it a recognizable you? In well, it's recognizable, but you know, it was a very different world. Yeah. I mean, this was a world in which, the world I was brought up in, it was still really a peasant society. Yeah. And it has changed dramatically, yeah. you know, in just a few years. Yeah. So then, of course, my various relationships and my, you know, the various women I've been involved with, mm -hmm. my present wife, mm -hmm. lovely woman, my <laughs> children, yeah. trying to make sense of that, right. you know, and the various things that I've done along the way, mm -hmm. my life in America. So trying to make sense of all mm -hmm. of that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, again, it's not that I sit up nights, you know, looking at of it, course, thinking, yeah. oh, well, I've got it done there. Yeah, yeah. So, so you want to read something from early on here? You know, I thought it might be fun under the circumstances mm -hmm. to read a poem called Cuba. Okay, which we're only 90 miles away. We're huh? very close, and Cuba seemed even closer in a strange way uh, at the time of the Cuban Missile Crisis. Oh, in that sense. Yeah. Closer I mean, in the imagination absolutely. and in the news. And, yes. Yeah. And in Ireland, uh, of course, I was brought up as a Catholic, so the upshot of uh, the Cuban crisis was that we all went to confession. 
So there's a poem about a, a young woman going to confession. Mm -hmm. She has something that's kind of gnawing at her, yeah. some little guilt that she has. Yeah. So that small um, trouble, as it were, set against this larger trouble, okay. Cuba. My eldest sister arrived home that morning in her white muslin evening dress. Who the hell do you think you are? running out to dances and next to nothing, as though we hadn't enough bother with the world at war, if not at an end. My father was pounding the breakfast table. Mm -hmm. Those Yankees were touch and go as it was if you'd heard Patton in our man. Mm -hmm. But this Kennedy is nearly an Irishman, so he's not much better than ourselves. And him with only to say the word. If you've got anything on your mind, maybe you should make your peace with God. I could hear May from beyond the curtain. Bless me, Father, for I have sinned. I told a lie once, I was disobedient once, and Father, a boy, touched me once. Tell me, child, was this touch immodest? Did he touch your breast, for example? He brushed against me, Father, very gently. So there's many things in there that, that are, I think, themes that I've seen in your poetry throughout. I mean, there's a kind of public and private, right? This larger world of Cuba and the world. And then this very intimate, I mean, especially at the very end there. Right. These are things that you're putting together a lot. Well, over the years, I mean, I suppose we, you know, a lot of our lives are spent negotiating, you mm -hmm. know, a kind of the, for want of a better term, the private and the public, mm -hmm. and the points, I suppose, at which they uh, coincide. Mm -hmm. And I mean, that's one of the things that poetry itself is doing, I think. You know, poetry is, um, one, of, one of the things that a poet may not be, actually, mm -hmm. is in any sense, a shrinking violet. One really mustn't care too much mm -hmm. about what people think, mm -hmm. you know? Because one of the things we do is to um, be betray, quote unquote, you know, our innermost feelings, yeah. our deepest thoughts, the yeah. thoughts that in some way, in some cases, we're not even really meant to have, mm -hmm. uh, but which we all harbor, we all entertain. And uh, you know, one of the things that poets do, I think, is to is to try to be, um, in a way, bellwethers mm -hmm. for the tribe. Is that easy though, or is I mean, it's it's hard to not care what other people what people think. Well, you know, as I say, for, well, in, in this culture, that certainly seems to uh, yeah. seems to be the case. Yeah. Though, mind you, there are there are very clear um, examples of people with a lot of visibility who clearly don't care about what people who think. Who are we thinking? Who are we talking about? But you know, uh, I mean, that, that, that's, a very, that's, another kind yeah. of, that's another kind of issue. Yeah. What I'm talking about is having the strength, the courage, mm -hmm. and maybe even the humility mm -hmm. um, not to be too concerned about how one's perceived mm -hmm. in the world. Mm -hmm. And I think that's actually part of the writer's job is to, is to do the things that um, others may shy away from. Well, you, I mean, you and I last talked in, 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 in this other mode that you have, which is to put yourself out into the world in a performance type place, right? With the picnic that you do. Well, that's so right. So I know you have that side to you of, uh, of there's the sitting in a room and writing, but then there's the shameless showman. Exactly. Yeah, I <laughs> right. wasn't going to say that, but yeah, yeah. No, I mean, I think you know. Here's the thing. I mean, I found myself a couple of weeks ago actually um, being invited by the New York Times to write a poem, a, a very public poem mm -hmm. about the related to the deaths of uh, these poor children right. in the town of Chum. Oh, right. In the yeah. west of yeah. Ireland. Mm -hmm. And, you know, on one hand, um, one might say, well, that's not something I should be doing. You know, on the other hand, I'm delighted that I was asked and I'm delighted mm -hmm. that public, uh, there is a public um, 
mode for poetry mm -hmm. and that mm -hmm. you have poets, for example, mm -hmm. in your show. But we need to be much more conscious of the poet as just an ordinary person. We need to see more of them in the ordinary course mm -hmm. of our lives. Mm -hmm. And the idea that um, they actually might have something to say, um, however, f however fleeting it might be, that they might actually have some, I hesitate from saying insight because I don't know that, because I really don't think we have anything in particular mm -hmm. that's special. Mm -hmm. But again, I do think somehow if we have allowed ourselves to be used by the culture and by society, mm -hmm. we actually represent something that's of the, 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 the um, collective unconscious. Mm -hmm. And that comes through us, I think. Do you see, I mean, we're looking at this long period of your own work. What do you see in the culture changes thinking about poets and their value and what they have to say? Is it more now, less now? Uh, I mean, poetry is part of the kind of public awareness. Well, I do think that poetry actually is quite visible in, mm -hmm. if one thinks of its many manifestations mm -hmm. in popular music. I, yeah. I'm a person who includes rather than excludes. I know, we've talked about and lyrics and... Uh, um, yeah. As far as I'm concerned, it's all part of one activity. Yeah. It's all part yeah. of one activity. Yeah. And um, I mean, that's not a stretch, that's just how it is. I'm actually right. writing a lecture at the moment about the some 18th century Gaelic poets mm -hmm. from County Armagh, which is where, or County Louth, South Armagh area, mm -hmm. which is where I'm from myself. And they were, um, their, their poems were coincidentally mm -hmm. songs and they were, um, it's not a stretch yeah. as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. It's all one thing. Let me ask you just in our last minute or two here, we're out talking to everybody about, um, you know, most important books to you, right? As recommendations or as thinking about books that were so formative to you. Um, obviously a lot of Irish poets you were reading. Are there, is there are American poets that you look to? That, Absolutely. You know, I mean, two of my, uh, the single greatest influence on me is John Donne, mm -hmm. uh, the English poet. But the, um, the, the, there are two great influences from this part of the world. I mean, there are many contemporary, modern and contemporary sure. poets. I started sure. off, you know, with T.S. Eliot very, very much in the back of the head, the mm -hmm. front of the head, mm -hmm. everywhere in the head. But two who are particularly important to me are Emily Dickinson, a mm -hmm. quite remarkable poet. I mean, there's re perhaps the greatest American poet. There's really nothing like Emily. Mm. Uh, and then, of course, Robert Frost. Mm -hmm. And even in that poem I read earlier on, actually, the Cuba poem, I mean, just as I say that, I realize how much Frost is yeah. lurking you about in there. You can hear that, that uh, kind of dialogue. That, the uh, dialogue. The I mean, dramatic moment. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, he was a master of, among other things, the dramatic poem. Yeah. And, you know, when you put two characters down, the little, the playlet. Yeah. And it's a fabulous device for a poem. And that poem is, is, is partaking of that. And then the, the, language of everyday speech, yeah. you know, which has been, you know, a feature since Wordsworth of what poets have tried to do. Yeah. People talking, talking to one another as if they really were sitting around in a parlor. Yeah. All right. Well, I, I mean, we could keep sitting around in a park for a long time. I'd be happy to do that, but well, we're going to stop. Thank Paul Muldoon's you. latest book is Selected Poems, 1968 to 2014. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed. And do stay with us here at the Miami Book Fair. We will be right back. I'm Jeffrey Brown. Stay with us.